Hello and welcome to the channel. I am that Evernote guy, providing actionable content that you yourself can use to make your Evernote better and better. This week, we're gonna talk about task management, the big one in the productivity world, and more importantly, how you can simply set up your Evernote to be a super efficient, super effective, and critically, super easy to use task manager. I've got three secret source tips that I really think makes this system zing and I've not seen anywhere else. So stick around and you can learn how to do it yourself. I've decided to break this down into a three part mini series. First part being the notebook structure that you will need. The second part being a live build with me session to set it all up. And the third part being a live demonstration of how it all fits together and how it all works. So let's just kick off with what your notebook structure needs to be. But before we do that, I'm gonna talk a little bit about my journey. If you want to skip ahead, just click one of the cards down below. If you wanna stick around for the journey, here we go. I started a new job this year, back in January. And as you do with a new job, I was taking copious amounts a day, copious amounts of notes all day, every day. And all those notes had actions in them. By the end of the week, I had about 20 different notes, all with different actions in. And to keep track of that, I needed to keep going to each note and seeing what I had done and what I hadn't done, what I've checked off my checklist. And it's just not manageable, it's not scalable. You can't go on like that. So I decided I need something a little bit different. I need a different approach. I went right back to basics and looked at tasks and thought they need to be their own individual note. They have a life of their own. They get born, they move through this process of being categorized and prioritized and scheduled and waiting for people to send information back to you and finally getting completed and done and archived. And you can't have 10 of them all in one note because you're going to have to check that all the time. So I decided to make each individual task an individual note. That sounds like a lot of administration is probably what you're thinking but it isn't because I've had lots of automation across the top. Simple automation, simple to set up, but very powerful. So I have a system that can treat tasks individually, I can surface them individually, I can track them individually, and I can track everything as a whole really easily. So I'm gonna step you into my Evernote right now, and we're gonna have a look to see how I've done that. i shrink me down here, there we go, and I'm gonna move myself over there. And as you can see, we have a somewhat garish but attractive graphic here and across the top here we have all the stages the natural life cycle of tasks and in here i've got all my different notebooks that sit in those individual stages now before any of that we've got the capture process here so let's start there and we'll start talking about capture so here's all the different things i use for capture Number one is Drafts app. This is an amazing app. It's only on the Apple system, as far as I'm aware, but it is a super, super efficient way of getting information into Evernote. It launches in half a second on your phone, and before you know it, you're typing your idea down, typing your task down, and bang, send it to Evernote. I don't know what they've done at the back end, but it's the fastest thing that I've seen that actually gets into Evernote. So Drafts app is a super good way to get information into Evernote, to get your tasks into Evernote. Control-Alt-N is a Windows global hotkey, and I will mark the uh, Mac one here to quickly create a new note and start typing. So you can be in any Windows app you like, Excel, Outlook, wherever, and if you have an idea or a task, bang, Control-Alt-N, new note, type it in, away it goes. Control-Alt-H is another very quick useful one. It's similar to new note, but it just launches a little window in the corner. And in fact, I'll just show you now. I'm gonna move myself over here and use Control-Alt-H, and that launches a little quick note there. Speak to Sally about that marketing budget. Okay, and bang, convert to note, done. So that's a super easy way as well of getting stuff in. And I use that if I've suddenly been called up by somebody and I just wanna keep looking at the screen that I'm looking at and just type a quick note. Very useful for Teams calls. Let's get rid of the quick note. Move me back over there and let's put the highlighter back on. So that's three of them. Now, here's secret source number one. And if you haven't seen my first video, go and check it out, link in the description. This has a live demo of this secret source, task clone. That's my task bot. I use my task bot to automatically extract 
checklist items out of notes and put them back into Evernote into my inbox as individual tasks. So this is really useful. If you are like me and you take lots of meeting notes and you quickly list the actions, one, two, three, four, using the Evernote checklist system, this is a great way of going from that system of having lots of meeting notes with lots of different checklists in that you need to check all the time to having meeting notes as reference points and tasks to live outside of those meeting notes and treat it as individual tasks themselves. So that is a fantastic secret source recipe for you there. As I said, check out my first video. You can see a live demo of that. And in the second video, we'll be building that. So I'll show you how to do it. It's so easy. And then we've got Web Clipper, which is super useful. Everyone uses Web Clipper. Evernote's famous for its Web Clipper. So it's a really good way of clipping information from the web, getting it in. Might not necessarily be a task, but it could be. Email Clipper is not so well known, but just as useful. And that sits in your Gmail client or your Outlook client and you're able to send emails directly to Evernote, which you may or may not want to do. I find that really useful if you've got a specific task and it might have some information attached with it and you wanna chuck it in Evernote. I prefer having everything in one inbox rather than having to check 10 different inboxes for all the tasks I've got to do. So I use the email clipper to chuck stuff into Evernote. And finally, not finally, penultimately, I think is the correct phrase, we have Evernote email, which is Evernote's own special email address that you get once you're a premium user, where you can send emails to it and it will end up in Evernote. I use this with my wife and kids, actually. I say, if you ever got any tasks for me, just email this address and I'll put it all in their um, Apple devices as uh, jobs for daddy. And they type it in and it ends up uh, in my Evernote inbox. So it's a task for me haven't told my kids that they can put silly messages in there yet as soon as they find that out i suspect i'll be getting a lot of colorful emojis shall we say and finally i've got scannable app which is evernote's own app on my iphone which is a brilliant application for scanning your documents or any other thing that you might want to put into evernote so these are all the capture sources mainly for tasks then we've got organize I've kind of talked about this already the inbox so everything goes into the inbox so we know what to do with it. And then we review that inbox and we do the next stage, which is prioritize. This is really simple. Move the task to these other notebooks and that's called P1, P2 and P3. And you'll get no prizes for guessing they are priorities. P1 for me is important stuff that needs attention. Not necessarily urgent, but often is urgent. P2 is important stuff that doesn't need doing now, but I need to keep an eye on. And P3 is just any other stuff that I can get round to when I want to. And I review it once a month, sometimes less than that. Now, secret source number two. This is not revolutionary, but I really think it makes a difference. So I have for the in progress section, a scheduled notebook and a waiting notebook. And the purpose of these is once I've got my task and I've prioritized it, I might want to say, right, it's a really important task. I'm going to schedule two hours on Friday afternoon to do that and put it in my diary and schedule it. I can then move it into the scheduled notebook and I don't have to think about it anymore. It's there. It's ready. It'll just pop up in my calendar when I need to do it. Same with waiting. If I've got to get some information from somebody to complete or progress a task, I don't want it in my big list of stuff that I've got to think about and check and do all the time. I want it in this waiting notebook. So I move it over there and I can see, okay, yep, I've asked for information on that and I'm waiting for them to come back to me. This might not seem a lot in and of itself, but the key is here, it gives you peace of mind. And that is why this secret source number two makes this really work. Because the whole point of a task management system is to keep on top of your stuff. And if you've got peace of mind, you know where everything is and it's being handled, well, that provides you inner calmness and that peace of mind of I've got everything under control. And that's what we want from our task management system. And these two notebooks here really help with that. Might not sound a lot, but try it and see what you think. Really helped me. Next, we've got another one which uh, is to digest. And this is for those kind of pieces of information, articles, YouTube videos, podcasts, uh, whatever, news stories that you need to read and you might get something out of it, or you might get a task out of it, but 
it's not like an immediate priority. So I just chuck it in there, the to digest pot, and then when I want to, and I've got time, or I might schedule some time to go and digest that information. So it just sits there waiting and ready. Next, I've got a couple here in my intelligence section. Uh, which really are quite specific to my job so might not be relevant for you so you might just want to get rid of them in your setup or they might work for you as well i often keep an eye on external intelligence to do with my industry if i see an interesting article that i get in from the web clipper i might send it straight into external intelligence and i'll use the web clipper to highlight key phrases and then it ends up in external intelligence and then i can take those key phrases and do something with them in-house intel is a little bit different that's pieces of information that I pick up from within my company that are useful for my job, but they're not external published pieces of information, so you can't share them around everywhere. And finally, or penultimately, yet again, we've got the done stage when a task has been done, and then we end up with archive when it gets automatically archived. And I have a bunch of uh, robots running and rules that the robots follow to automatically archive things, which is really useful. So this is the whole setup. It's not revolutionary, but it does allow you to use your Evernote in a way that other systems don't to manage your tasks. Well, you might be wondering, what about secret source tip number three? And that's coming up right now. And that's in the searches. And the searches are really key to this because they enable you to surface all the tasks as you need. Now, you want to search using Evernote's powerful search function across all your notebooks most of the time, but not in this case, and I'll explain why. I use P1, P2, and P3 searches so I can pull up those tasks. And honestly, P1 tasks I'm constantly pulling up throughout the day. But once a task has been through this life cycle and it's hit the archiver, it gets sent out to my archive system to go into the specific client notebook. I don't want those P1 tasks to be surfaced and have a massive list of tasks and have to work out what is active and what is not. So I use a special syntax search called a stack search, which very simply only searches across a specific stack in Evernote. So all these notebooks live in a specific stack. I call it the WIP stack, standing for work in progress. And you can see that in Evernote here. So you can see here work in progress, WIP stack, and shrink that up there, expand it. And you can see all the notebooks that I use there. So then I use this specialist search and we're gonna search for P1 tasks. I've built a special shortcut there and that is only bringing back priority one tasks for me. And that gives me visibility. Where are my really important tasks? I need to know where they are and I need to know where they are quickly. And here they all are. I can see that two are still in the P1 location. One's in waiting, one's in scheduled and one's in done. But I found that looking at uh, having to look at the task and then look over at the location was even a bit more of a bind. So I added an emoji system to replicate where the task was in the system. So where I've got a white dot means the task is untouched. I need to pay attention to it. Where it's got an orange dot, I know it's in waiting. Where it's got a blue dot with an M in, I've made time for it. I don't know it's in scheduled. And if it's got a tick, I know it's done. This is a very quick visual reference way to pull up your tasks, your P1 tasks, and look down there at the emojis and you know where they are and it draws your attention to what needs to be done. So really that emoji system could be secret source number four, but we'll cover that in the build with me session. That's pretty much it for the entire task management system. Well, the structure of the task management system, and that's how it works. Put me up the fill screen here and we'll close this video out. So just as a recap, to know what we've looked at, we needed to structure our notebook setup to manage tasks properly. And then we've got our three secret source recipes. Number one, task bot via task clone. Number two, the scheduled and waiting notebooks to give us peace of mind. And finally, number three, the search, to search across just that particular stack. And the secret bonus tip number four, the emoji system, but we're gonna cover that in the build with me. Now, because I find I've been on a journey, done a load of research and found a load of useful resources, I've linked them all in the description down below. I've unsurprisingly put them in an Evernote note and I've made that a public shared note. So you can get links to everything that I've used here and everything I've talked about today. Just thought that would be a really useful resource for you. And please do consider subscribing 
as we'll continue this journey on learning how to set up Evernote to maximum productivity. Thank you. Yes, how can I help? Um, Stan, he's got his cutest pet. He's got cute pets. I'm just recording live for YouTube at the moment, so if you don't mind, I'll finish. Thank you. So I can signify. Hello. Thank you, Harriet. Thank uh, you very much. By the way, um, you know that person, uh, the little person, he's my friend. Thank you for that, Harriet. Um, Barnaby. I'm, thank you. And I'm Harriet. Yes, we know you, Harriet. Dad. I did. That was not me. I didn't do it. Well, not did I. You did it. it. Must I be. Didn't must didn't be the chat, right? Shoot. Could you mind if I carry on now? Thank you, though. Yeah. Bye. Thank you, Harriet. Dad did it, not me.